Hi guys and welcome back. Today is the first piece in a little challenge for myself for probably about a month. I am actually really excited about it. I've been thinking about it for a long time, but I've realized that I've let this little voice tell me that after I finish each piece, I have to make sure that the next one is a completely different concept or else it'll get boring and repetitive. But that's actually really counter to the way that I like to find inspiration and work, I realize, because I love creating series of paintings and really sinking my teeth into a topic that I find really fascinating and then exploring it until it's no longer the the main focus in my brain and then I can move on to the next one. And it's been a while where I've really settled into something and allowed myself to explore it for as long as I felt interested in it. So this is my challenge for myself. I'm going to spend about a month really delving into the theme of Egyptian mythology. There's just so much information there. There's so many different characters and and icons and, and all sorts of different story details that I can start putting into painting. So that will be my first subject of focus. I'm really excited about it. I'm going to talk to you guys about it as I go along. And I'm going to talk more in this video about how I'm going to keep things fresh and different for myself and how I can come up with different ideas. And, and anyways, I do have a really quick announcement about this piece. The print of this, the full size print will be available with other art goodies as well in the December Patreon top tier package. And that's over again on my Patreon. There's a link down in the description that'll take you over there. So if you wanted to make sure that you got this print in a Patreon package, you only have until the end of this December 2019 to go sign up for that to make sure that it comes to you. I, I love sending those out. It's really fun to send off little art care packages to all my wonderful patrons. But, but anyways, let's just go ahead and jump right in with this painting. So for this piece, I was looking up a lot of different gods and goddesses of ancient Egypt, and I, I'm passively familiar with most of them, I or a lot of them, or a lot more that I haven't even heard of, but I've always been really fascinated with, with ancient Egypt, with these lost ruins and this really rich mythology, so I, I've always loved it. So I'm excited to be able to really narrow it in and, and enjoy getting to know some of these characters a little bit better. But this one, I decided that I wanted to focus on Mott. And she, her name is pronounced differently in a lot of different places. But this is the one that, that I first learned. And that's spelled M-A-A-T if you want to research her a little bit more. But, but there are a lot of different features about her. She is the goddess of balance and justice and order, as well as the stars and the order of, of all these constellations and galaxies. And I thought that was really fascinating. And she was the goddess that is responsible when someone dies. She will weigh their heart against her feather to judge whether they were good or evil in her life. And I wanted to make sure that that came through in my painting, as well as the stars that she, that she regulated. She actually is in control of the seasons and the stars and harmony and i think that actually this is a bit of a side note but there's also a concept of chaos in egyptian mythology that has a really strong play in that so i think i'll, I'll make sure that i do another piece that that represents that but but anyways so that for this one I, I wanted to make sure that the background the space that she was existing in was a star field and this one was really, really fun, actually. I got a new set of brushes just for, for the background. I love painting stars. So I, I just made sure that she had a little bit of a texture behind her and some stars. This pack is for Procreate, which is, by the way, the program that I'm using. So I'll make sure to link to it down below if you want to use that. But it was really fun to build up the space that she was in. One note about the space or <laughs> the stars behind her is when I first finished it, it's pretty evenly dispersed as far as where the values are. So later on I go in and I add another layer on top of it that adds more darkness to the bottom, more weight to the bottom of the painting, and then it spreads up a little bit more. That just helps balance out where the eye is going so that you don't stall out on the background. It also helps certain things as I change the values of them, it helps them pop off of the background a lot better. 
And I went back to look at a lot of different references of Egyptian artwork that depicted Mott to see how they how they showed her, different things that they made sure was was there when they were showing what Mott looked like. And one of the main features is they have a feather. Usually it's like attached to a headband right in the middle of her forehead going straight up. And that's that's her feather, the one that she uses to weigh the hearts. And that, of course, had to be in here for her character design. I really needed that to, to show who she was. And originally, the way that I drew it is I had it pretty upright, which is pretty similar to the way that I saw it in, in a lot of those original paintings of her. But as I was working on it, I was realizing that since it was the... It was the tallest point of any of the, the active elements in this painting. Nothing else came close to that and it was really close to the edge of the painting itself. It felt like I had actually specifically made the dimensions of the painting to accommodate that feather, which can feel really jarring. It takes you out of, out of the painting, really. It, it makes you look at it and realize that you're looking at kind of this contrived piece. So I, I made sure that once I, I realized that I shifted the feather so that it was more at the soft angle and I gave more breathing room up at the top between her head and the feather and the edge of the painting and it felt much more natural and it, it wasn't like sticking out anymore as something that was fighting with the composition. And the heart was another thing that I was really trying to balance out how it played with, with her hand specifically in this composition. So I wanted to make sure that I really had a lot of negative space around it since it was one of the focal points of this painting and I really wanted to show all of the different ventricles and, and valves that were sticking off of the heart so so I wanted to be sure that it it really had a lot of separation from a lot of the other elements within the painting so I decided to have it kind of floating between two of her hands both of her hands I should say so floating there like she was interacting with it on more of a magical level but I, I did have to carefully manipulate it so that it was just the right size and it covered just enough of her hands that it still felt like it was interacting with them, but not so much that it was not grounded in a way. And while it is floating, I do want it to still look like it it's belonging there in this 3D space. So I think I'll talk a little bit more about my ideas for how I can expand on on this piece moving into doing more Egyptian mythology paintings. So like I said, there's a lot of really exciting challenges that come with it where I can start a new piece and then there's there's the challenge of, okay, well, what things should I keep relatively similar? What things should I do distinctly different? Which things should be completely opposite? And I love that stuff. I think it's really fascinating. So because it's going to be something that I'd like to spend more time on and more paintings on and more levels of finish to each thing that I'm doing, whether it's a sketch or, or a finished piece like this, I'd like to be able to, to get the most out of spending time on this one theme. So I need to start looking at the differences between the different characters or the, the gods and goddesses, I should say and how I can start looking for different color patterns. So for her, since I have, in the end, I go with a combination of lighter values in her clothing and darker ones, which I wanted to have a little bit of that like balance to it, as well as gold details. And her background is this rich blue color. As I move forward, if I'm doing a opposite piece, maybe one that depicts more of the chaos side, I can do something that has more of a, a red yellow kind of a star background so it still has the stars it still has that that same space but the colors are different and then i could maybe potentially make sure that gold is still present or that could be a difference where i could do a complete opposite of it but yeah i i think that that's that's where it starts getting to be something that can be interesting i can start really looking at each piece and thinking okay what can I do to make this one special and different and exciting? But also what can I learn from, from the past ones that I've done? And as you can tell on this one, if you've watched much of my other videos, I, I don't do as much soft blending in my pieces as I would like to. This is kind of new territory for me working on this. So that's another thing that as I'm working on new pieces within the same kind of concept, I can pull back to earlier pieces of when I was experimenting with something and I can 
I can see, okay, this is how I executed it. Now that I'm working on this piece, what can I do better? What can I take from that? What did I learn about blending and what things did I develop as I was figuring out exactly how I want my layers to, my layer structure to be. So I don't know. I just, I think that it's going to lead to more innovation in different places than what I'm used to. And that I think will be a good thing. It'll help me to stay on my toes moving forward after I do this little challenge for myself. I also am really excited about blending digital and traditional. So because I'd like to do a lot within the same concept and the same theme, but I do want to be able to do digital and traditional, I get to look at different ways that I can get similar effects or similar shape language or what things will be the same no matter what between traditional and digital and then let the things that won't be the same be different and express that medium that I'm using. So I think that's really the key is that as I switch between digital or traditional, I can make sure that, okay, this thing is designed the same way. But that's it for today. I'm feeling very optimistic about this challenge for myself. I can't wait to see what more I can learn as I'm working on new artwork. But like I said earlier, this print is available in the top tier package that I'll be sending out at the end of December, as well as other art goodies. So if you wanna make sure that you get this print, as well as some other little secret art things, I do have a link right down in the description that will take you over to my Patreon. I also have a link to my art shop if you wanna get prints or anything else or originals, that's all there. But that's it for today. I will be back on Wednesday with another video. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you then.